Welcome back to Kick and Crochet. I've got a fun project for you today. This uh, I'm calling it a washcloth, but it could be a dishcloth or maybe like a little centerpiece thing you could put stuff on. I don't know, whatever you want it to be. So it's using Intarsia Crochet for the color work, and if you don't know what that means, that's okay because I will show you what to do. It does require a little bit of preparation before we can get started. Um, today I'm using cotton yarn. This is Dishy yarn from We Crochet. I think if I remember right the colors are wine, silver, and ash. And I'm using a size H crochet hook. It's attached to my project right now. Okay, you can get a chart for this project from my website. The link is in the description. And before we get started, we're going to need to prepare our yarn. So each of these little seg segments might be a separate ball of yarn. So we're going to do five separate silver segments, but we don't have to wind five separate things of yarn because we can reuse one for here and here and here and here, right? So, <clears throat> or here and here, rather. So we need to do two that are 12 yards and one that's six yards, or you can choose to use a ball of yarn for one of those and wind some bobbins. So I'm going to show you a trick I'm trying out today. This is the first time I've done it because keeping track of all of the different balls of yarn can be tricky. So what I'm doing, this is six yards of silver that I already kind of measured out. and It's not exact, it's just approximate. I'm going to use a bobby pin to wind it around just to make my ball. You could just wind it into a regular little ball all by itself, but I'm gonna try this out. So I'm gonna wind six yards of the silver yarn onto here. So you're gonna need for the light color, one thing of six yards and two things of 12 yards. Again, one of those could be the rest of your whole ball of yarn if you want, which is what I'm gonna do for this light color. For the darker gray, you're gonna need the same, two things of 12 and one thing of six. And for the red, you're gonna need one small ball of 12 yards, and then I am using two regular balls of yarn for the other sections because I would have to wind like 70 yards and I would rather just pay $3 to have an extra ball. So I bought two balls of the red yarn so that I have one for each side of my star so I don't have to wind a whole bunch. But if you only wanna buy one ball of red, you can wind like 70 yards of red into a ball. Probably won't fit on a bobby pin like this, but you could do it. So it's going to take you a few minutes to get all your yarn ready, and that is the boring part for sure. Okay, so this is six yards of silver, and then what I'm going to do, <coughs> hopefully this works the way I think it will, I'm going to put it on a stitch marker so that I can attach it to the bottom of my project so that when I turn my project, my yarn doesn't get all tangled. Let's hope it works. Okay, so I have one that's 12 yards of silver, one that's six, and then I have my ball of silver yarn for my other 12 yards. I have a 12 yards of red, and then two balls of red, and then I have two 12s and a six of dark gray. Again, I could have left one of these just being my regular ball of yarn. Okay, so we have all of our yarn ready. We've got our hook. We've got our chart from the website. Then we are ready to go. So, the first two rows are just straight single crochet, and there's 40 stitches across. So I did a foundation single crochet to start, and then I just single crochet back. So this is my first two rows already done, because I figured you don't really want to watch me just single crochet for 80 stitches. So now I'm on row three. I'm going to chain one for my turn chain, which does not count as a stitch. Now I'm going to single crochet. <clears throat> if you look at the chart for row three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna do seven because on the eighth, that's when I need to change colors. So I'm gonna do seven single crochet. So now this is my eighth one. I'm going to start the single crochet, but I'm not going to finish it. I need to finish it with my silver. So I'm going to choose one of my <clears throat> 12 yard balls of silver. I'm going to just take an end. And I'm going to finish the stitch with silver by pulling through. 
Now on my chart, I just have one stitch with silver. So you can kind of tighten that up a little bit if you need to. So I'm going to start the stitch, but I'm not going to finish it because now I need to switch to gray. I'm going to use one of my 12 yard balls of gray to finish this stitch. And I'm going to do one stitch with this, but I'm not going to finish it because it's just one stitch. And now I'm going to switch to my 12 yard ball of red for the middle of this. Whew. All right, so that was a lot of color changes in a very short time period. But I think you guys can handle that. Once they're started, it's much easier. So now I'm going to do red for a few stitches. Let's see what our chart says. All right, I'm going to see if I can attach these on here and see if it works. Might just be annoying to have them on here, and if so, I'll just take them back off. But I thought it might be fun to try. Something new. Alright, so my chart says that I need 20 stitches of red. This is my 20th stitch, so now I'm going to need to switch colors to my light gray. I'm going to use, so I'm just using my ball of gray for this one because it's going to be my, if you wound it 12 yards onto another ball, then use that, whichever one you put 12 yards on. Again, this is just going to be one stitch of the light gray and then switching to the dark gray. I'm going to use my other dark gray ball with 12 yards on it. You always switch colors by pulling through the stitch before with your new color. You finish your previous stitch with the new color to switch. All right, and now I'm going to get my other ball of red yarn to work this other side in red. So you should have seven different strands of yarn attached to your project at this point. Okay, so that is the end of row three. So I'm going to turn my project around. I love having these little balls on here because my other yarn is going to start to get tangled. So every time I turn, I have to rearrange where my other balls of yarn are. But these ones that are attached on here, they just turn around themselves. That's so cool. Okay. All right, so row four, I'm going to chain one. And again, I need eight stitches of red, so I'm going to do seven, and on the eighth one, I'm going to switch colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is my eighth, so I'm going to drop my red. I'm going to pick up this gray. Not that end, that's my tail. This end right here. I'm gonna pick up this gray and pull it through the last step of the stitch before. And now I need two stitches of gray. One, two. Now I need to drop my gray and pick up my silver. I 
need two stitches of silver. On the second one, I'm going to drop my silver and I'm going to pick up my red. Actually, I'm going to go back a step here because on this second stitch, if I pull this through over here, there's going to be that. Well, actually, that's okay. That line. But if I stop here, and when I'm doing this second stitch of silver, if I work over this strand of red, it's going to hide that hide that extra strand a little bit. So on my second silver stitch, I'm going to work over that red strand, and then I'm going to pick up red at the end of my second stitch. And that just kind of helps it look a little bit more seamless. You don't really see that getting pulled through. And I'm going to do that a lot whenever I have kind of a distance between when I need to where I need to pick stuff up. Okay, now I need 18. Sorry, going back. I only wanted to do one stitch of silver. Okay, then I need one stitch of silver. So I'm going to do one, and then I'm going to drop my silver and finish that stitch with red. So I need to go on with red now. So now I need 18 stitches with red. The only downside I've seen so far of having these little things attached to my project is that usually when I change colors, I like to put my old tail behind so I don't get confused about what I've done. But, um, so I'm having to leave them in the front, but we'll see how that works. All right, so this is 18, so I'm gonna need to switch now to gray. So I'm gonna drop this red yarn. Pick up my gray yarn. And I'm not going to pull this super tight because I am going to work over this strand as I go because it was a stitch away so it's a little bit stretched out. So now I need two stitches of dark gray. One, two, and on the second one I'm going to switch now to my white or my silver. And then I'm going to do one stitch with silver and switch to my red. And I'll finish the row with red. I'm on row five, I need to do nine stitches with red. And on this ninth stitch, I need to switch to white or silver. And I've got one stitch of white, and I'll switch to gray. And then two stitches of gray. I'll switch to red. I need 16 stitches of red. The 16th stitch I'm going to switch to silver. And I'm just going to work right over that. So 
silver. I'm going to do two stitches in silver. And I'm going to switch to gray. It gets easier to find the yarn you're looking for as you get farther away from the tails because I keep accidentally grabbing the tails of the previous color. Then one stitch in gray and switch to red. Again, I don't want to pull that too tight if it's I got a stitch in between because it'll make my project kind of pucker. So I'm going to work right over that bar of red and finish the row with red. For row six, I'm still going to keep nine stitches of red to start. Switch to gray. I'll do gray for two stitches. And switch to silver. I'll do silver for three stitches. And on this third stitch, I'm going to work over the silver, or this red, because I don't want to have to pull it across my project. So I'm going to work over it on my last stitch, and then switch to red. And then I'm going to switch to gray. Again, I'm going to make sure I don't pull this too tight because I don't want to make my project pucker. And now I'm going to work over this gray as I finish those last two stitches in the red section. So I need to have three stitches of gray. And then switch to silver. And do two stitches of silver. And switch to red. We'll finish it with the nine stitches of red. All right, for row seven, I'm going to start with ten red stitches. In my tenth stitch, I'm going to switch to silver. Just going to work one stitch in silver. I'll switch to gray. I'm going to work four stitches in gray. Switch to red. Look at ten reds. I'm 
and then I will switch to silver. I'm going to work three stitches in silver. Switch to dark gray. And do two dark gray stitches and then switch back to red. All right, you can see our star legs are starting to take shape here. Turn it over. I know this looks like a big tangly yarn mess, but it will come out. I'm going to pause for a second and untangle my balls because I wasn't rotating them as we go. All right, so this is the start of row eight. Again, I'm going to start with ten single crochet. My tenth stitch, I'm going to switch to gray. I'll do two stitches with gray. I'll switch to silver. And then I will do four stitches with the silver. And switch to red. Now I've got eight stitches with red. So that's my eighth stitch, so I need to switch to gray. Again, I'm just going to work over that bar of gray when I do this next stitch so that it hides it. Do four stitches in gray. One, two, three, Four and switch to silver. Got two stitches in silver. One, two, and switch to red. I think the hardest part about color work is just managing your yarn colors to make sure they don't get all tangled. Alright, so that's the end of row 8, so now we go to chain 1 and turn. Switch my yarn so it doesn't get tangled. Alright, for row 9 we're going to start with 11 single crochet. And on the 11th I'm going to switch to silver. Do two silver. And switch to gray. We'll do five gray. Now because my gray is gonna have to work over this red strand. I'm going to make sure that it's up here on the back so that I can work over it so that it doesn't stream across the back, obviously. So I'm going to work over it when I do these last couple gray stitches. And now on my fifth gray stitch, one, two, three, four, five, I will switch to red. In a couple more rows we're going to get rid of this middle red ball. That'll be nice. Only four red stitches on this row. And then we'll switch to silver. Again, don't pull it too tight because you don't want it to 
pucker and we're going to just work over that silver line. So we're doing five stitches with silver. Two stitches with gray. And switch back to red. This next row is going to be our last row for that middle red ball. Alright, row 10. Turning our project around. Alright, row 10. Again, we're going to start with 11 single crochet. On the 11th stitch, I'm going to switch to my gray. And I'll work three stitches in gray. Switch to silver. And work five stitches in silver. Now I'm going to switch to red for two stitches. And then I'll switch to gray. Again, not pulling too tight because I want to be able to work over that little trail of yarn. I've got five stitches in gray. And switch to silver. Three stitches in silver, switch to red, and finish the row in red. Okay, so now this is the end of row 10. You are a quarter of the way through your star and we are done with this middle red ball of yarn. So we can trim this off and we can take this off. And you can see that there's quite a bit left. I always overestimate on these because I would way rather have extra than run out. Although it looks like maybe I got more extra than I thought. I probably have about six yards left on there. So you don't have to line 12 yards on the first ball, apparently. But better safe than sorry. Okay. So we're down one. <clears throat> and we're moving on to row 11. For row 11, I'm going to start with 12 stitches of red. And you can see how now we're getting far away from the tails. It's starting to look a lot cleaner. All your messy yarn is down lower so you can see your project better. So it's 12 red. Now I'm going to do two with silver. Switch to gray. Do six with gray. Now switch to silver. Oh no, I've got a knot in my yarn. And 
do five silver. Switch to gray. Three gray and switch to red. And finish it off with 12 red. Right, so now we're done with row 11. Now moving on to row 12. Start with 12 red stitches. And switch to gray. We have four gray stitches. Switch to silver. Four silver stitches. And switch to gray. Do five gray stitches. Switch to silver. We'll do three silver stitches. And switch back to red. I'll turn it over for row 13. Again, switch our yarn. Try not to hit my camera when I switch my yarn. All right, for row 13, we're again gonna start with 12 stitches of red. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna make the complete project for you guys. Um, on camera, but I am going to get all the way through where you add and subtract the different balls of yarn, except the very end. All right, so now we do four stitches of silver. Four stitches of gray. Four stitches of silver. And four stitches of gray. And we'll switch to red for the rest of the row. Out in the middle of this row, so this is row 14 that we're working on. And so I did 13 stitches of red, 4 gray, 4 silver, 4 gray, and now, or sorry, 4 gray, 3 silver, 4 gray, and now I'm doing 3 silver. And then I'll switch back to red to finish the row with 13 red.
All right, row 15. I'm going to again start with 13 red stitches. Now I'll switch to silver. Do four stitches of silver. Switch to green. Do three stitches of gray. Switch back to silver. Do two stitches of silver. Switch to gray. We'll do five stitches of gray. And switch back to red to finish the row with 13 red stitches. Alright, I'll turn for row 16. This will be our last row of having our skinny middle of our star. So we're going to do 13 red stitches again to start our row. Then we'll switch to gray. Do five stitches with gray. Switch to silver. Do two stitches with silver. And switch to gray. And do two stitches with gray. And switch to silver. Do five stitches with silver. And then switch to red. And we'll finish row 16 by doing 13 red stitches. For row 17, start with 12 red stitches, but now I need to switch to gray instead of the silver. So I attached my last little ball of gray yarn on here, and I'm going to find the end of it and switch to gray here. Maybe. And then I'm going to work four stitches in gray. Now I'm going to need to switch to silver here in a little bit, but my tail is over here, so again I'm just going to pull that up and make sure I work over it for the next three stitches. So I need four stitches in gray, that's one, two, three, four, and then I will switch to silver. I'm going to do three stitches in silver. And I'll switch to gray. Do one stitch in gray and switch to silver. One stitch in silver and switch to gray. Now I'm going to do four stitches in gray. And now I need to switch to silver, so I need to get my other ball of silver. 
attach that on here. And I'm going to get the end of it and switch to silver. So now I've got a whole bunch of little balls of yarn attached on here. And I'll do three stitches with the silver. And switch back to red to finish it off with 12 red stitches. I wish I could tell you this is the last time you have to add a color, but it's not, but you'll see in a little bit. All right, row 18, we're going to chain one and turn. Oh, I love having all of those attached to the bottom. That makes it so much easier to turn. Okay, for row 18, we're going to start with just 10 stitches of red. So now we're working our way out to the edges of our points that are coming out. And I'm going to switch to silver. I've got these extra stitches, so I'm going to make sure that I don't pull it too tight and I work over my end as I go. So I'm going to do seven stitches with silver. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go over this end so I don't have to pull it across. Seven. And I'll switch to gray and do three. You may wonder why I don't just keep going across with this gray, which I could do because this is just gray across the rest of the star part, but I want to keep my strands together with where they're going to be. So I'm going to, actually I can cut this silver off. Now I'm going to do one stitch with the next gray. And then I'm going to, again, I could cut this silver off because I'm done with that for now. And then I'm going to do nine stitches with the next gray that I need to have unwind a little bit more. Unwind gray, give me some yarn. Now because I'm going to work over these three silver stitches, I want to make sure I don't pull this too tight because I don't want to pucker my project. So now I'm going to do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. I'm going to work over this red strand so that it doesn't show. And nine gray, and then I'll finish it off with ten red. Okay, so this row is a little weird because of those grays in the middle, but if you look at the chart, I'm going to use this gray that was the lower leg, and it's going to continue up the, the top. So that's that middle one. This left one is going to go out here, and then the right one that I just joined is going to come out here. 
So the reason I did just one in the middle is because I want that yarn to stay lined up with the middle where it's going to keep going, and I want the left to stay lined up with the left where it's going to keep going. So that's the reason for what I just did. Okay, so that is the end of row 18. For row 19, I'm going to start with nine red stitches. I'm going to switch to my first gray. And I'll do 10 stitches with this first gray. And then I'm going to switch to my second gray color just again so I'm keeping my strands organized. I'm just going to do one stitch with my second gray, switch to my third gray. two stitches with this gray, and then switch to silver. And my silver, I'm going to do nine. And switch to red. I'll finish the row with red. For row 20, I'm going to start with 10 red stitches, oh, sorry, not 10, 7 red stitches. And again, because I have these two, I'm going to work over this strand, not pull it too tight. I'm doing 9 silver stitches. Then I'm going to do three gray. And now it's time to add another gray back in. So I'm going to move, actually I'm not going to move that, I'm just going to use this middle ball. My ball of yarn. I'm going to do just one gray stitch, one silver stitch rather, here in the middle. Now I'm going to switch to gray. I need to do one gray stitch. I need to do two silvers, so I need to add a silver back in. This one. I do two silver stitches. And then I'll switch to gray. I'll do ten gray. And switch to red. Finish the row by doing seven red stitches. So good news, you are now halfway done with your project and you're not going to have to attach another ball of yarn ever again. All the balls you need are already attached. Yes. Okay, so let's keep going. Row 21. I'm going to do a couple more rows with you, and then I'm going to let you finish the last pointy spire on your own. Okay, so row 21, we're going to start with six red stitches. And switch to gray. Do seven gray stitches. I'm going to switch to silver, and again, I'm going to have to work over my end, or my I don't have to work over my yarn because I'm pulling it across so far. So I'm going to make sure I don't pull it too tight. And I work over that silver yarn as I go. I'm doing five white uh, silver stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And switching to gray. I'll do 
another two gray stitches. One, two, and switch to silver. Doing two silver stitches and switching to gray. I'll do six gray stitches. And starting here, I'm going to work over the silver strand so that it doesn't hang out in the back. And then I'll do six silver stitches. Six and switch to red. I'll finish the row with red. All right. We'll turn it for row 22. As I hit my camera again, sorry about the bouncing. Okay, for row 22, I'm going to start with five red stitches. And I'll switch to silver. Do four silver stitches. And switch to gray. Again, I'm going to have to work over the line of this gray so that I don't show it. I'm doing nine gray stitches. And switching to silver. Do two silver stitches. And switch to gray. Do three gray stitches. And switch to silver. And do eight silver stitches. I'm going to work over the gray so it doesn't get stretched across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and switch to gray. I'll do four gray. And switch to red. And finish off the row with five red. All right, row 23. We are almost to the wide point of our star here. Twenty-three. We're going to start with three red stitches. And then switch to gray. Do three gray stitches. Switch to silver. I'm going to do eleven silver stitches. And switch to gray. Do 
the three gray stitches. And switch to silver. Do three silver stitches. And switch to gray. Now 11 gray stitches. Work over that gray in the back. And then switch to silver. Do three silver. And then switch to red. And finish the row with three red. Alright, the next row is the skinny and, well, the long and wide ends of our star. Alright, so we are going to start this next row, this is row 24, with two single crochets in red. And then we are going to switch to silver. for one stitch. And then we're going to switch to gray. Then we're going to make sure that we don't pull too tight and that we work over that yarn. Now with gray we're going to do 13. And we'll switch to silver. And do four silver. And we'll switch to gray. Do four gray. And then we'll switch back to silver. And we'll do 14 silver. And we'll switch back to red for two stitches. So this point at row 24, we can get rid of a few colors. So the only things that we need to keep are these two middle ones. So I can trim off, well, and the reds. You need to keep the reds, of course. So I can trim off this gray. And do, do trim off this gray. This middle gray I need to keep because I'm still using that. And then my center silver is the one attached to my ball of yarn over there. I can cut off this gray over here. That off, and I can cut off this silver over here and take that off. All right, so now my project is much simpler. 25 is the last row I'm going to show you because I think from here on out you should be able to do it yourself because it's pretty simple from here on out. Okay, so for row 25, we're going to start with 16 red stitches. I'll switch to this gray and do four stitches. Switch to silver, do four stitches.
and now I need to switch back to red. And this red is all the way over here, so I can either cut it off and rejoin it, or I can just work over it along the whole row. Just make sure you don't pull it too tight when you first start. So I'm going to do that, because I don't like leaving an ends, and there's plenty of ends already. So one, two... All right, so that is the end of row 25. So from here on out, all you have is just, oh, this yarn is so fuzzy. Okay, solid red, dark gray, light gray, solid red. And if you follow the chart, you've got two more rows that are just like that one. Then you get a little bit skinnier for three rows, a little bit skinnier for four rows, a little bit skinnier for four rows, and then you end with just red. So I am confident that if you've gotten this far, you'll be able to finish the top of the star on your own. So I hope you enjoyed this project, and I'd love to see your finished pictures. If you tag me on Instagram at kickin underscore crochet, then I will see your projects, and I will look forward to that. And then, of course, all of the ends to weave in the worst part. That's okay. So I hope you're having a good holiday season. Don't forget to subscribe to get all of the latest videos. And I've got a project next week that is going to be great for using up all of these extra yarn scraps. So stay tuned for that.